beast, isn't they? Chuffed to bits. The smallest little thorn back. No, I'm just concentrating on not losing the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him, man. It. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different. A good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I've got two rods in the water and I'm fishing. And where am I fishing? I feel like I've got unfinished business at Chesil Bay on the River Itchen. I'm still chasing flounder. <laughs> they're not easy to catch. Not that they're not easy to catch. They're not easy to find, I think is the, is the correct thing to say. Um, and I'm trying different tactics. So very kindly, Kyle Sutherland has said that I was in the right place, but I wasn't at the right point. So going on Google Maps, I've looked at where we're at and what we're doing, and I've parked myself. Now I know I'm gonna get cut off by the tide. Tide's on its way in. In fact, I can see I'm already cut off by the tide. <laughs> this might all go wrong. <laughs> but I'm fishing, and I've got different quality bait this time. So it was quite explanatory. Last week when I fished here, the bait was literally on its last legs and a lot of it had its tails missing. And I mentioned this to the bait supplier and he said that was because it's dragged bait. It was dragged bait and obviously they lose the tips of the tails whereas bait diggers sort of tease the worm out. Now I don't know if that's a thing or not but you know that's that's where we're going with this. This is dug bait and already it's a lot different. They've got their tails, they're angry, they want to bite me. Uh, <laughs> let's have a quick close up. Um, yeah, so different quality bait, a lot more movement. I'm fishing clip down wishbones. I've got two hooks on each rig, two rods, so I'm fishing four hooks in the water um, and the tide's coming in quick. And I'm going to get cut off here. I can see this coming. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I might get wet feet. <laughs> Give you a bit of a spin round and you can have a look see what see where we're at and you'll see that i've got to go that way to go home i don't well the van's that way i can't go that way over there it looks like a fish is cruising around the bay anyway let's give you a show and give you a, a look and when I bait up next because you know I'm always keen to get a bait in the water get the line out um, so they're out and they're doing their thing they're fishing I've got to move my tripod actually and you can see what I'm up to that's the way back home <laughs> So I'm perched on my little seat, beavering away, fishing like you do. And I've just prepped my second bait for the smallest of the two rods. And it's a wishbone rig. So I'll give you a close up. So you can see all that worm, with all that bejazzle, mirrored on the other side. And when it lays on the bottom, it'll lay in tandem like that. And every now and then, five, 10 minutes, you give it a couple of, you give it a little lift and wind, lift and wind, lift and wind, and hopefully that will get the attention of something. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll clip it down. That's going on the tiny little seven foot, I think it's seven foot, or even be six foot, um, telescopic rod. And I'm using telescopic rods today because they've got really fine tips, give really good bite indication and I don't need to cast any distance. Eight pound line, small light rods, clip down rigs, much better worm today um, than previously. And I'll swap it out, swap it out, chuck it out. So that is baited and weighted, ready to go. It's only a three ounce weight, no grips. So you can just gently tease it back, jig it back, almost lure fishing to a certain extent. If it's been out there five, 10 minutes and no bite, give it a little twitch, give it another five, 10 minutes, give it a little twitch. 
you're not even too worried about how close you get to shore, because the flounder can be quite close in. But let's talk in more fishing. Hear yeah, that siren in the background. Um, yeah, it's quite urban. Middle of Southampton, less than two miles from where I live. I'm completely cut off now, I can't get home. Tide's in, no route out. I'm on a little bank island above the tide line. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> um, yeah, clip this on, get it out. I thought I saw a knock on the left hand rod and while I was concentrating on that one this one actually went nuts but I think that one was there's some debris floating down the river but this one definitely looked I hate to say it, it didn't look like a flounder it looked very school bassy um, I might just give it a twitch just to see just to see if we can uh, initiate a take because they do sometimes, they'll just look at the bait, they'll be there next to it and it won't be until it moves and then when it moves they'll go for it. That looked more like a school bass bite than a flounder bite. And if, if you're wondering what, what makes me think it's different, a, a bass bite can be quite aggressive and it's like a hard knock and it's usually two or three and then they'll, what they do is they gill rake or something and turn around and come back for it. So a bass bite, you rarely, unless it takes off, you rarely want to hit it straight away because sometimes they've come up and they've just slashed at the bait, they'll spin round and come back for it. Whereas a flounder bite is a much more subtle, like a, a rattle rather than a knock. And what will happen with a flounder bite is they tend to be a rattle and then nothing. Yeah. What it might be is sat there just taking the bait in deeper. They literally just lay there motionless on the bottom. And the problem with that is when they're deep hooked, they're really hard to unhook. You have to go, Fisho does some really good videos. If you want to catch up and see a good way of unhooking a flounder, you'd be hard pressed to find a better um, method than what Fisho shows on his videos. And he goes in through the gill, gills and turns the hook around and then pulls it clear. As long as you don't touch, they're actual gills, if you go through the gill rakers without touching the gills, um, you can turn the hook around and it, it's a good unhooking method for flounder that is. Go have a decent set of forceps for that. Hmm. So this one did get hit quite hard but it hasn't come back. It was a hit and run. I'm using a three hook flapper on one of the rods now. I've swapped the um, wishbone rig over to a three hook flapper. But it's been made up using power gum stop knots. So that means I can move the rig around. So I'm fishing one below the weight, as in it's slid all the way down to the imp at the bottom, 
and it's fishing below and the other two have been moved down slightly on the rig um, in case that because there are going to be school bass here so I'm still fishing that rig with one trace with um, with ragworm on it for flounder because it's hard on the bottom and it's away from the weight and the other two because the rod I've moved the rod up slightly um, to point up in the air 45 degrees and the others will be flowing in the current just on or just above that, that bottom layer you know four to six inches something just wafting around whereas the other one will be pressed hard against the bottom and that's just to give myself some sport just to see if we can twinkle something out and when I say twinkle something out it's going to be hard work teasing anything out of here today I can see it it's all stacked against us but God try I've just I've, I've got it in my bones that this place fished so much differently 25 years ago and it's quite shocking the difference that can happen in one person's lifetime one person's lifetime you, you hear of things where people say oh global warming this or air pollution that and, and all those other things but how much of a significant change can there be in a waterway in such a short period of time and the f surprising thing is if you listen to anyone that tests and look looks after the water quality is better maybe the water quality is something to do with it I don't know but the fishing for pot bait the water quality plastic pollution over nitrogen pollution when I say nitrogen pollution everything that we're putting everywhere and washing off the fields and working its way into waterways and stuff I'm no expert but I do take an interest I do try to think these things through and what could possibly be going on yeah it's really quiet had one knock almost like don't give up yet keep your spirits high dink dink I'm here <laughs> but didn't want to come and say hello. <laughs> um, yeah. Throwing everything at it. I'll be on the water's edge in a minute, just dangling ragworm in the water. Come on. <laughs> Trying to, the fish whisperer, <laughs> dangling ragworm. It's about high tide now, but Southampton water has a double high. So it comes all the way up, drops a little bit and then comes in again and then it will drop away. Okay, we've got another, where do I put it? This is my other bejazzle wishbone rig. Treading on the weight. <laughs> Don't want to tread on your weight. Little three ounce weight and an imp. The top of the rig, if I did want to clip it down, because it is quite long, uh, SRT spring between beads. And on the business end, small hooks, I think the size four hooks, um, a little bit of bejazzle, just a little bit. Green and black, which mimics, um, I think that mimics mussels, mussels or, or some of the shellfish, small shellfish, I think. I'm willing to be corrected. Um, and I think, you know, flatfish species go along looking for pretty much anything they can munch and crunch. I'm just going to clean these ragworm off because you want fresh on there and I'm, I'm always critical of ragworm it's never perfect it's never it's never 100% and if anything these ones are a little bit too good they're too big but I don't like putting partial worm on but I'm going to put it on it's a fine wire hook and for anyone that hasn't seen this before all, all the experts you know I know you know but you take the the hook the business end and there's two like little appendages that stick out of his face and underneath it is his mouth you put the hook into the mouth into the mouth parts sometimes his pinchers will come out and he'll try and grab it and what he'll instantly do is he'll tense up against that you just hold it there and as he relaxes then you feed it through and every now and then he'll really tense up he doesn't like the hook being put in him wait to try and feed the rest on just while when he relaxes otherwise you'll be bursting stuff and juices and wormy bits everywhere patience is a key with this if you want a really nice hook presentate presentation of a ragworm don't force it on don't smash it on 
I'm just trying to tease this one on but I'm trying to get the hook to go all the way through the body you just keep feeding it through feeding it through and it's gonna have to pop out the hooks gonna have to pop out of his side at some point and I like to try and get as much as I can but with a little wiggly bit And that's what you end up with. Hook point showing, ragworm on, no ragworm innards shooting out all over the place. Nice, clean, dry, nicely present. Presented is the word I'm looking for, isn't it? Presented, not presented. Just cleaning the, um, and the same when it comes to take them off. You hold the top of the hook and slide your finger all the way down. Be careful of the barb, that you don't catch your finger on the barb. And if you're wondering where I'm throwing that, I'm throwing that old worm back into the water. So again, this one's a soft worm for some reason. I can feel the difference. Into his mouth parts, let him tense up. Tense up and relax and then feed the, the worm on. I always pull faces, I, I can even feel myself doing this. I always pull faces. I do feel for the critter a little bit. He's having a fine wire hook rammed up through his body. But, he's fish food. Fish food or crab fodder. <laughs> there aren't no crabs about at the moment. The baits are coming back untouched. In the spring, these would be lucky to last a few minutes out there. They would get stripped and you'd have to do five, ten minute bait changes. Because no point leaving a bare hook out there. It's got nothing on it. With the crabs eating it all. There's another nice ragworm. I've managed to pierce his body there somewhere, so you may spot the difference with this one. But there he is, a little bit of tail and a little bit of a jingle. That's ready for the next rod that comes in. Hang it on the, on the tripod. Give my hands a quick clean. And what I'm going to do now is just give those both a twitch. So both rods that are out there now, I'm just going to give them a little lift and a wind to see if I can induce a take if anything's nearby, you know. So the rod's just gone over and it's caught me completely unawares. And even though this is a light rod, as you can see the bend. <laughs> it is a light rod, but it's got a fair old bend in it. I've got to set the drag light because I've got to set the drag light because of how light a line I'm using. This has given me a right old scrap on this light here. Cool. Is it? He's a fair old size. I've got to fish so lightly with this because the line is so light, the rod is so light. Oh, he's a, oh, he's a gorgeous fish. Don't lose him, Mark. Don't lose him. Don't lose him. If it looks like I'm fishing awkward, it's because I am. Oh, <laughs> that is a stonking fish for here. That is absolutely amazing. Look at that! I'm fishing eight pound line. A really nice setup. Look at that. <laughs> that is a stonking bass for it. He had this rod bent over double. And look at that. He's lip he's lip hooked. <laughs> Just try and get that hook out nicely. What an absolute stunner. Just try and be careful that I don't get gill raked. Let me just get the uh, discord here. There's quite a bony section to the, the jaws there. That's it, that's nice. Let's get him out. <laughs> Let's give him a rinse off. And a show. I'm going to rinse off. Oh, 
I am chuffed to bits. What an absolute stunner. Look at that. I'm not gonna do the force it into camera shot to make it look bigger than what it is. I don't know. I'm not even gonna weigh him because I want to get this one back in straight away. What a stunning fish. Look at the mouth on that. And he's bristling. Absolute. <laughs> Look at that. I think you can tell I'm happy. I'm chuffed to bits. That is a stonking bass for air. And there he goes. So I haven't had target species yet. And it's all got very difficult. Just had about an hour's worth of rain. I've got no shelter. I'm soaking wet. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm struggling to keep warm because it's that, you know, that deep bone chilling cold. And with the dampness just set in right next to the water, yeah, it's cold, proper cold. Um, but that bass, <laughs> that lightweight rod, let me just have a quick look at it. It is a, does it say on it? It doesn't give any specs. It's that cheap that it doesn't even put specs on it. <laughs> it's a 10 foot telescopic rod. And it bent like the clappers. That bass wasn't particularly big. You know I'm rubbish at judging weights. Every time I try and judge a weight or give a weight guess, I'm always miles off. I'd like to think it was a pound and three quarters, two pound. I don't know. I'm rubbish at that. I didn't weigh it because I was keen to get it back in the water. He was very, very light hooked and he had 99% chance of going back good. So I just smashed him back in the water. And I hope the footage of him going back came out okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm still holding out for a flounder. So the little small rod has got the clip down wishbone rig on, uh, loaded with one ragworm on each hook. And the longer rod, which I am firing out a little bit further now, um, out into the bay, has got a three hook flapper, the one that we've done on the channel. Um, but because it's got power gum stop knots, I've adjusted everything down so the bottom hook none of it's clipped down now so you don't have to use the clips on that rig you can use it as a flapper I've slid the bottom hook all the way to the bottom dressed down the other two so I'm fishing one below the weight even though it's above the weight but the bait is below the weight um, and the other two are flapping and that's what just caught that bass well I don't know if I could catch it on film he went all round the bay. He even came and swam in along the, the shoreline. And he was taking line off that little rod. <laughs> it's got eight pound line on that little reel. And I had to let him take it. I had to let him run. Um, the rod was maxed out and he was still running. And something you rarely catch on camera, it's quite difficult. But when you've got a bass and you see the flashes, it silvers in the water. It gets your pulse racing. It's quite exciting stuff. I enjoyed that, that was really nice. A, n a nice size schoolie bass on a light rod that you could see in the water. I enjoyed that, it was good. So I'm struggling to film. I'm cut off, I can't get back to the van yet. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the rubbish in the background. This berm in the river that I'm on collects rubbish. And one thing I will say, every time I come, I take a couple of bags of rubbish home with me but I've had a bit of a result. So I emailed my local MP, Environmental Health, Council, Southern Water, basically anyone that I could think of that might listen about the pollution here, the plastic pollution. And even though it's not my work, because I can't take credit for it, I've had it confirmed, they're gonna put a plastic catcher in this bay later on this year. They're waiting for funding. Some charities are involved. They have litter picks on a regular basis and the council come and dispose of all the rubbish. But if I'm trying to say anything, all of this, none of this has been put into the river deliberately. All of this is washed into the river from waterways. Drains, the ones in the road. So if your little plastic doodah goes in the gutter and you're miles away from the sea, it's gonna get washed into the waterway. It's gonna go down a river into an estuary and it's going to go out to sea 
and in the process of being rumbled and tumbled along its way it breaks down into microplastics and microplastics can look attractive. We put plastic beads on our baits, we put plastic enticers on, fish will eat them and then inadvertently we poison fish with plastic. So in the background, I'm hoping you can see that, this is collected because it's on the bend of a river, generic plastic waste that's gone into the waterway. And possibly none of this has been introduced by anyone throwing something into the river. It's all gone down a drain somewhere else and been washed into the river. Heartbreaking to see, but this bit is going to be sorted soon. I'm going to have to clean the lens because it's raining. The camera's not waterproof. I'll get back to you in a bit. I just thought I'd snatch a quick couple of minutes between rain showers. It stopped raining. Still misty murky. It's cold. It is really cold. Can't feel my feet and my hands. I'm struggling just as I get them warm, just as they're starting to feel, then I have to be bait up again. Even my lips. My face is all cold. <laughs> I've got a job to talk. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to keep coming back to this place. I'm looking forward to fishing this during the spring, to be honest, because I think it's got potential. It's got real potential. The way it's fishing at the moment, that's south coast winter fishing. This time of year, January, February. It's always hard work, always hard work. Um, but winkling that bass out earlier, that, that's made my day. That has made this session totally worthwhile. I've got some bait to burn through. I've got some bait that still needs using up. I'm not going to try and save that for anything else. And I'm still cut off. I'm landlocked at the moment by the tide. But the tide, I'm watching it. It's just on the turn now. It's just starting to turn on the ebb. So I've probably got about an hour, hour and a half. So if anything happens, of course, I'll come back to you. But as it stands, it's looking pretty grim. <laughs> and the rain started again. So I'm going to have to put the camera away. Struggling because I'm struggling because it's raining. <laughs> I'm into what is another decent bass, I think. I think you can tell by the way the water's going. I've got a very light drag set. I've only got eight pound line. This is a cracker. Another stunning bass. <laughs> what a lovely fish. Let's have a look, see where this one's hooked. Oh, right in the, right in the scissor. My hands are that cold, I've got a job to... My hands are that cold, I can hardly feel it. There we go. Lordy, lordy, sort my hat out, it'll look like a smurf. Popper smurf. I just winkled out another one. Look at that. Now I would say, if I'm being uber critical, that one is a little bit smaller than the last one. But what a lean fish. Absolutely stunning. Look at that. What an absolute cracker. Look how clear and thin perfect that is. Not a mark on it. Beautiful fish. Sorry about the water on the lens. Um, I haven't got a shelter today, so I'll get out of that water droplet bit. Um, yeah, look at that. What an amazing creature. 
gonna go and get this one back in and then I'm gonna clear that water off the lens. See if we can get this little critter going back. And there it goes. None the worse for wear. So what was meant to be a flounder session it's turned into a pass session. <laughs> I've still got some bait. The tide is starting to run. It is starting to run, so that's probably switched the fish on. I'm going to bait up. That's two now on the three hook flapper. Stick with it. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> I'll take that every day of the week. <laughs> so the weather hasn't given up. It keeps raining, then it's not, then it's misty, then it's not. Um, And it would have been very easy to get despondent today but strategically just at the right times i've had bites i've had the odd jingle i've had the odd knock just to keep me interested i've prepped my baits i've worked hard and i've winkled out two bass <laughs> i came here fishing fishing for flounder trying to avoid bass and i've caught two bass so the tide is well and truly on the drop now um, well and truly on the drop, I'm to the end of my bait. It's time to call it a day. I'm gonna have a nice hot bath and a roasty dinner. It's a Sunday. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate your company. If you haven't already, could you please consider subscribing? Subscribing supports the channel. Helps me to make more, more films like this to share with you lovely people. It doesn't cost anything, it's free. It's one of the few things in life that is. Um, yeah, subscribe if you if you like what you see. Um, and as always, tight lines and happy fishing. I hope to spend more time with you again sometime soon. From me, for now, from here, it's goodbye. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>